A new rule in the small pack trials on page 66. On page 66, it says we had a new rule about a third of the way down after one. If before the completion of judging the winner's pack, hounds become so faulty as to be eliminated from placement, the next scored hound, even if already ordered up, shall be moved up in their relative position. So this, that rule was not in there uh, three years ago. Three years ago, if you got into a winner's pack situation and you got down to your down to your three best hounds or your four best hounds, and one of them became very faulty, yeah. as a judge, you you had to you had to place them. Those were the hounds that you had left, and if one of them got very faulty, you had to place them. I've seen trials where they got down to a brace and one of them got very faulty, and the judges had to place them. So what all the, all the competitors are saying, you know, they'll go, hold, oh, you know, Joe, he made a field champion out of a dog and it wasn't worth two cents. And Joe's feeling kind of bad about it because you never, ever, ever trust the dog. As soon as you start putting a lot of trust into that son of a gun, he just may do something that'll embarrass you. So you don't want to put a whole lot of trust in him, and we want our judges to come up with the best dog don't want field champions being made from dogs that are faulty. So we put the new rule in, if before the completion judging of the winner's pack, a hound becomes so faulty as to be eliminated from placement, the next scored hound, hound or hounds, even if already ordered up, shall be moved up. Now those hounds aren't brought back out to the field. You know, the ones that have been ordered up, they, you don't bring them back out. You don't say, well, number 10 becomes faulty, let's, let's bring out 17 back to see if he could solve this check to see if he could do something. You don't bring him back up. You just eliminate that dog, and then when you sign your, your judge's book on how the dog's placed, you eliminate that. You don't move them down. If, say, you got three dogs left running, and one of them becomes so faulty, you say, well, uh, come so faulty, we'll make him NBQ and, and move the others up. You don't move them around. We're, we're talking fault, we're talking elimination. I mean, elimination, you don't place them up. <coughs> We're talking major fault here. That no placement of the dog. No placement at all. You don't uh, move them around. You must be aware that when you start, if you have a seven hound winner's pack, seven dogs, 3, 10, 11, 17, 2, 1, and 8. I'm running seven hound winner's pack, and I know the book tells me i got to reduce the class to five. So we're running them, and we're talking as judge, you know, which ones we like, which ones we don't like, how we're going to evaluate. And so the person I say to you, you know, we got to get down to five. You say, yeah. And and you say three and, uh, uh, three and eight are my, my lowest dogs. Three and eight are my lowest dogs. I agree with you. I've been watching three and eight too. Three and eight are our lowest dogs. So we tell the roving marshal that we can pick up two at a time. Let's eliminate three and eight. But what we must do, we must always be aware of that which one is the most faulty. Which one comes up first, three or eight? Because we've got to rate them in our. We should have them rated in our book. Which one comes up first? And a good Roby Marshall, sometimes the judges say, get up three and eight. Good Roby Marshall say, which one first? Which one first? So we've got these hounds rated. So we agree that three is seven, and eight is six, and now we got five hounds. Because later on in our running, if this dog here becomes faulty to deserve elimination, this hound here could move up to that NBQ. We gotta know whether it was this hound or whether it was this hound. When we get down to a seven, we got to know how we're picking them up. we got to know how we're picking them up because as they're being picked up, that's how they're being, being placed. Always the, the lowest one and the better ones are always running. Okay, any question on that? What'd this hound do? Come so faulty. Be eliminated. Be eliminated. Mark, <coughs> your book is being an eliminated dog. Yeah. Can 
need to order them up, you can just mark it on your book that he was eliminated. And it's all field trial because you placed the others. Okay, but if you order it up, I mean, if you're down to five dogs and you eliminate 17, and at this point, no one is aware of this ruling, you're going to have to explain. Well, you don't have to explain to anybody. You just, you just order them up. Well, not, not if you brought, if you place that six dog in BQ and the well, owner of 17 say, what's going on, you know? As a judge, you certainly would want to explain to your field trial committee or your field trial secretary and let them give out the award and the placings as you're out in the parking lot on your way home. <laughs> 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 you don't have to answer to anybody, and the more you talk to competitors, sometimes the more trouble you get into. Uh, certain people got a knack to really talk to people, to tell them about their how, and other people don't. So it's you, you're not obligated to explain anything to anybody. You place your dogs, you, you work for the field trial committee. You tell the field trial committee, this is what we done, this is our placement, where's our book, sign your book, and you're done, and you're off work. You don't have to explain to any. I know, I know judges, excellent judges, that we take a competitor and put his arm around his competitor and just tell him everything in the world wrong with the man's dog, and the guy, guy walks away just as happy as could be. <laughs> he just has that knack of, of, of talking to people. And other people that try to tell, I try to tell you what's wrong with your dog, and uh, we start getting the shot. So some people have that knack, others don't. You're not obligated to tell them. You're not going to have that happen very often, though, are you? No, never very seen it happen. Seldom, I was going to say. Yeah. Never seen it happen. But on the same token, if I ever hear a judge or tell me that, yeah, they knew the dog was real faulty, but they had to place it because the book says they had to place it. Well, the judge is wrong. Mm -hmm. Very much wrong. Uh, if, uh, like I say, if you got a new guy out there, don't know anything about field trials or anything, and he takes the dog out there and he runs it and gets it picked up, I mean, uh, wouldn't it be a good idea for the judge to tell him what's wrong with his dog, you know, in case he needs a few points on what kind of dog he needs? Yes. It's got to be used in discretion. If you're a judge and you see that the man is a new man, you think you can talk to him fine. Absolutely. Always nice. Always nice to have judges who can communicate to the people. But it's awful hard to find that perfect a human being that knows how it works and excellent how a man and also can communicate with people. If he can do it fine, if he can't, it doesn't happen. That's not how we get What did dog number 17 do? Well, we turn back. Quit. Quit. Okay, so what? So we quit. Is there any place in the books that says the dog quits? Quits for eliminated? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 52. 52. 52. Definitions of faulty actions. Quitting. Tell us about quitting. What does it say? It just says that it, it seems to be the worst penalty that can happen. You know. What else? We've read from the book if you could. Serious fault? If the severe penalty and extremes for eliminating quitting indicates lack of desire and harm. Nope, before that. That's too far. A serious fault deserving severe penalty and its extreme form, elimination. I'm going to underline the word elimination. Deserves elimination. Deserves elimination. Down farther, they talk about backtracking. Tell us about backtracking. Is that free backtracking for us? Is the fault of following the trail in the wrong direction? Go ahead. If persistent? If persistent in, for any substantial time or distance, it deserves elimination. Underline the word elimination. Underline the word elimination. Now, when we go on, we can read all the rest of these faults, ghost trailing, pottering, babbling, swinging, skirting. You'll never see the word elimination used in this book under any of those other faults. So they connect that word elimination with two faults, quitting and backtracking. So if this round is going to be eliminated in the winner's path, it better be for one of those two reasons. Not because he, he started pottering, 
or because he started babbling, or you know, if, he, if the owner of 17 says, how come you eliminate my dog, and you tell him, well, he started leaving the checks. No, that's, that's not right. If he started leaving the checks, he shouldn't have been, been in the winner's path. We're talking winner's path. We're talking the best dog out of, out of 30, 40, whatever you got in. So if you're going to eliminate a dog at that stage of your competition, it can only be for one or two reasons. You got to tell the man the dog quit, or the dog backtracks. Of course, you've got to be very uh, sure of your decision that, that you made of those faults, because those are the two major faults. And now I'm not saying that as we evaluate other dogs in other first series packs, you know, we eliminate dogs for other reasons. We pick them up for being a fault. But in this level of competition up in your winner's pack, elimination is tied in with quitting and backtracking. Let's go to the uh, page 48 of our standard. Best part of the whole book. Page 48 through 55. <laughs> I can have some help reading this thing. He started off on uh, telling us what a beagle uh, is according to the standard. Legal is a trailing hound. Trailing hound is part of a fine game to pursue it in an energetic and decisive manner and to show the determination to account for it. They want to underline to pursue it in an energetic and decisive manner and to show a determination to account for it. Legal is a trailing hound who has a purpose. First purpose is to find game. That's the reason we, we feed the little devil and turn him off the lead. So he can find some game, pursue it in an energetic and decisive manner, and to show a determination to account for the game. Okay, next one, uh, paragraph two. Uh, all phases of its work should be approached eagerly, with a display of determination that indicates willingness with any problem encountered until successful. Action should appear deliberate and efficient rather than haphazard or impulsive. And you may want to underline action should appear deliberate, efficient action. We don't want haphazard, impulsive type action. So a very efficient running, running dog. Um, to perform as desired. How about back there in the corner? Beaver Lake. Sir? Again? I'm asleep. Jimmy, Jim. Jim, <laughs> how about telling us about uh, three on the top of page 49 to perform as desired? Can you read that for us? To perform as desired, the beagle must be endowed with a keen nose, a sound body, an intelligent mind, and must have an intense enthusiasm for hunting. You may want to underline intense enthusiasm for hunting. Intense enthusiasm for hunting. Put over on this side of the room, uh, paragraph four, Jeanette. Legal field trials are designed and conducted for the purpose of selecting those hounds that display sound quality and ability to the best, of, to the best advantage. Okay, they're telling us what field trials are designed to do, conducted for the purpose of selecting those hounds that display sound quality and ability to the best of their advantage. The standard of performance contains descriptions of both desirable and faulty actions. The judges will use it as a guide to evaluating performances and will credit or demerit performance to whatever degree their actions indicate quality or fault to the extent that these actions contribute towards accomplishment, fail to contribute to, to accomplishment, or interfere with accomplishment. And they've used the word accomplishment three times. Kind of emphasize what it's all about. It's about getting something done, some accomplishment done. So you may want to contribute to accomplishment, fail to contribute, or interfere with accomplishment. And this is a guide. It's a guide for our judges so that we have a common language as we talk about these terms. And, and uh, I live up in a northern boy up in Michigan, if I get together and judge with somebody from Alabama, we got sort of a common knowledge to use and talk and how. Although sometimes they start using some terms which I really don't understand, and I suppose I'm the same way, because we live in a different part of the country. 